Hello everyone and welcome back to another <laughs> Hello everyone and welcome back to another Ultimate Guides video. My name is Kiri and today we're going to be going over everything you need to know about the Elder Scrolls Online Dueling. This video is going to be part of a series of PvP guide videos that I'll be releasing. You can expect guides on 1vxing, group PvP, and BGs in the future. So if you like that type of content, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you can be the first to know when they drop. Before we get started, I do want to let you guys know that I am streaming on Twitch now. That's going to be twitch.tv backslash TV. I stream every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday, so come hang out. At the highest level, ESO PvP dueling shares a lot of similarities to parsing in PvE. You should be heavy attack weaving or light attack weaving every ability. Let's get into our first topic and that's PvP parsing. There's a few things you want to have before you start dealing damage in PvP and that's going to be your own buffs and making sure that the enemy is also debuffed. This will make sure that your damage is the most efficient and you're taking the least amount of risk whenever you do decide to go for CC and damage. Now the final three things shown in red are interchangeable. So this is where you can start mixing things up. But I do want to say that it is very important to make sure that your self buff and debuff window is as efficient and as fast as possible so that you can give yourself more time to damage, CC, and ult the enemy before you get interrupted by the enemy's ultimate, CC, or your buffs fall off. Alright, now let's talk about our next topic, which is dynamic timing. Your offensive and defensive windows are going to revolve around two key elements in the fight. The first one is tracking your enemy's ultimate economy. The second is tracking your CC immunity. This is visually shown through the white swirls at your feet. In principle, your enemy will drop their ultimate every 20 to 30 seconds. More expensive ultimates will take longer to build up. Likewise, the enemy will attempt to CC you every 7 seconds. In other words, every time you come off your 7 second CC immunity cooldown. The enemy has the most kill potential when they hit you with their ultimate and CC around the same time. You should play defensively or evasively leading up to the peaks, making sure you have enough resources to either survive or counter the enemy's upcoming burst. Immediately after the enemy drops their ultimate or CCs you, those respective kill potential peaks drastically begin to go down. This is the best window of opportunity for you to deal damage because the enemy will no longer have the tools to interrupt you with a CC or turn on you with an ultimate. You can continue to do damage at minimal risk until the enemy's kill potential begins to climb up again from either your CC immunity wearing off soon or the enemy coming up on their next ultimate. In which case, you begin slightly alternating your playstyle again to prepare to counter, brace, or evade their upcoming burst. In other words, the best time to deal damage is after the enemy uses their trump cards, and the best time to be defensive is when they're about to use them. Now let's talk about indicators of upcoming burst. Most enemy players will form patterns around their CCs and ultimate, it is crucial that you take note of the abilities that they use right before they CC or ult you. These abilities can act as an indicator that the enemy is about to go into their burst. Most of these indicator abilities will be at the tail end of the enemy's self buff and debuff mode that we talked about earlier. They usually mark the enemy's transition from debuffing you to burst damage. For example, many Magicka Templars cast a purifying light on you right before they go into toppling charge crescent sweep, or both. In that scenario, purifying light will act as an indicator or your cue that a CC or ult is incoming. Therefore, if you block, roll dodge, 
or otherwise use a preemptive defensive ability when you see the enemy cast a purifying light there's a high chance that you will then counter their upcoming cc or ult sometimes you can use the enemy's ultimate itself as the indicator that a follow-up burst or cc is incoming before we proceed on to more examples of this in action let's talk about a few tips and tricks that will help you maintain an efficient pvp rotation Bar swap cancelling is the act of ending an ability's animation early by swapping bars immediately after you cast the skill. This will cause the ability to fire off faster than its intended global cooldown, at the cost of having to wait a little longer before you can use another ability after the bar swap. The same effect can be replicated by block cancelling a skill, but recent changes to animation reduce the reliability of block casting some abilities. This is why we're going to focus solely on bar swap cancelling. Knowing when and which abilities to consciously bar swap cancel can be the determining factor in winning or losing a duel. There's a global cooldown or GCD to every ability in ESO. While the actual GCD is roughly 0.9 seconds, for the sake of simple explanation, let's use 1 second as our global cooldown. That would mean that we can cast one ability every 1 second. Bar swap cancelling an ability will fire off that ability faster than its intended global cooldown, but in turn we will have to wait until the next global cooldown before we can fire off the follow up ability. Now there is also a small delay before you can fire off an ability after bar swap cancelling and this was changed in the most recent patch but we can ignore that because we will still be in the global cooldown of our abilities when that delay ends so in essence the trade-off of being able to fire off an ability faster with bar swap cancelling will mean we will have to wait longer before we can use the next ability now that we know how bar swap cancelling works let's talk about when to consciously use it this will include Abilities where the timing is crucial to your burst, such as an execute ability. An execute, if you have one, will likely be the last ability in the duel. Therefore, it doesn't matter if the cost of bar swap cancelling your execute means you have to wait a little longer before you can fire off another ability because the duel will already be over. You'll want to sometimes bar swap cancel your CCs to mix up the timing or the tempo of your parse and make it more unpredictable for your enemy making it more difficult for them to time their counter. Finally, bar swap cancelling defensive abilities when your survivability is time sensitive, such as a burst heal or a ward when you are at low health so that they can fire off faster. You should be striving to cast an ability every global cooldown of the fight unless you're heavy attacking, CC breaking, or actively countering the enemy. Our next tip is for maintaining an efficient parse with melee playstyles. Every melee class will have a few abilities you can cast without needing to be in melee range of the enemy. These abilities, which we will deem kite abilities, include but are not limited to self buffs, self heals, range debuffs, or range damage over times. When you're fighting against a ranged class or playstyle such as a Magicka Nightblade or Magicka Sorcerer and you find yourself in a situation where the enemy is kiting you or out of range, you should maintain an efficient parse by resorting or refreshing your own kite abilities while closing the distance to your enemy. While you can't cast any abilities while you're holding down sprint, you effectively do the same thing by letting go of your sprint button to give yourself just enough time to quickly cast an ability and quickly go back to holding down sprint again. This method is almost identical to simply holding down sprint, but you can continue your PvP rotation while closing the distance to an out of range enemy. One final strategy for using kite abilities as a melee player is against other melee playstyles. When you've reached the point in your rotation where you need to recast yourself buffs and debuff the enemy, which is made mostly of kite abilities, you have the option to move out of range of the enemy while you refresh your buffs and debuff the enemy. This can be useful to create space when you're under too much pressure, or even better, to interrupt and counter the enemy's melee burst combo by being out of range. All this while you're actively refreshing your own buffs and setting up for your own burst combo. One downside of kiting your enemy as a melee class however, is that you won't be able to weave in your light attacks or heavy attacks when you are out of range, which means your overall outputted pressure or sustain is also decreased. Make sure to use this kite strategy only when you desperately need to create space for yourself or to actively counter an enemy's melee burst while your buffs and debuffs require a refresh. Our next tip is for range classes. You may already be aware that many range classes, such as Magicka Sorcerers, continuously bunny hop while they are in combat. 
as a range class versus a melee class, staying out of range of the enemy is one of the best ways to mitigate the pressure and effectiveness of your enemy. You can create space with movement abilities such as streak or shadow image, but maintaining that range requires you to keep moving. All melee classes have the ability to prevent or interrupt your continuous movement with either a root, a snare, or a CC. A root or a CC will lock your character in place for a few seconds unless you respond with either CC breaking, roll dodging, or purifying the root. But if you are mid jump when you're rooted, snared, or CC'd, your character will continue its movement in the direction of the jump until you arrive at the ground. These few extra moments of uninterrupted movement can be the deciding factor of being in or out of range of your enemy's next melee ability. This is where bunny hopping comes into play. By continuously jumping as a ranged class, you increase the chances that you will be mid-jump when your enemy CCs, roots, or snares you. Melee classes can also take advantage of this mechanic by preemptively jumping away from an enemy in an attempt to mitigate the effectiveness of an expected upcoming CC, root, or snare, or preventing enemy melee damage abilities by being out of range. That's why you bunny hop, like and most gentlemen. tricks, there is a cost. You must be aware that you cannot roll dodge or sprint while you are jumping, making bunny hopping less appealing to stamina and melee classes. Finally, let's break down a few more examples of dynamic rotations. Starting off with a Magic Sorcerer mirror match. The enemy sword gets respectably low here, so we want to push for the kill, but we are then met with an indicator overload of an incoming CC and burst. We can continue to output our own damage and counter the enemy CC and burst by now block casting. And surely enough, the enemy hits our block with a CC. We are then met with another indicator, haunting curse of incoming CC and burst. So we interrupt the enemy with our own CC. The enemy is unfortunately able to interrupt us, which gives both sides a moment to stabilize, so we restart our buff and debuff rotation and go straight into damage until we notice an enemy indicator. We see the indicator, our Q to block cast so that we can counter any enemy CCs. Not all CCs are blockable, but you can still use blocking or rolling as a way to mitigate incoming damage when you want to continue to be offensive for a few extra moments without the risk of taking big burst damage. Here by blocking, we're able to squeeze out one or two more offensive abilities before we have to stabilize. With this additional pressure, we're able to keep the enemy low to hopefully close a kill. You don't have to look for enemy indicators 24-7. It's the most important to look for indicators when you know that the enemy has an ultimate or to a lesser extent when you're off of CC immunity. Those two key elements are usually the dictating factors for the dynamic portion of PvP dueling. By understanding these concepts and experimenting with them in your duels, players of all levels can expect to see their gameplay skyrocket. I share my thought process in these next two fights on my stream. So if you enjoy this type of content, don't forget to follow me on Twitch. I stream every Wednesday, Saturday, and Sunday. Enjoy a few minutes of stream commentary, and don't forget to leave a like if you've learned anything new. The thing is you can heal while doing damage if you have a pop. So don't even worry about popping your vigor, don't worry about popping your rally if you have a pop. Try to do a little bit more damage, they won't expect that. You just pop your, uh, they won't expect you to heal while you're doing damage. Big CC defensive there, I'm waiting for his end cap. I'm gonna say, make sure I have enough stam for his end cap that's incoming, so I'm gonna debuff slower with heavy attacks here. There's the end cap. Just block a little bit. And hit him with my first. Try again. There's his end cap. I'm gonna pop a potion so I have enough magic to purify the end cap. End cap debuff is very important to purify. Should be the first thing you do before you even heal. Unless you got CC by it, of course. Then you might want to heal or roll dodge. So let's try this again. CC. Make sure every, every debuff is on him right now. I have a heal. I don't have to worry. There. I'm gonna use my heal now. I was saving that heal because I knew the end cap was coming, and that, by heal I mean my pot. Block the CC, that means I can CC him now. Getting a 
little spell here. Just dodge roll, that's all I gotta do. Yeah, but he can't kill me. Incap's coming here. I knew that was coming, so I blocked it, but he just... We're gonna fight Keeper and we're gonna get absolutely on. He's won um, a dueling tourney. He's got in second place and third place, and he's always like been top three. Hit him with a CC here, put some damage in. He's trying to hit me with a top lane, I can tell, so I'm gonna block that. I'm blocking until the top lane comes out, and then as soon as he top lanes, I'm gonna CC him, but he blocked that, so I'm gonna try to CC him again here. He tried to debuff him again because he just purified. He's gonna heal and then CC and then go to damage here. But all the debuffs are purified, so I have to try again, re rally. I'm gonna perma block because I'm low HP. I have extra magicka, so I'm gonna purify. He hasn't debuffed my power of the light yet. It's about to pop. It just popped on him. I gotta re rally. He's gonna try to burst me here. Make sure I purify everything. Free vigor here. I'm gonna block because I'm taking a lot of damage and then hit him with a CC. Re rally. Back into debuff mode here. He's not heavy rest doing, interesting. I'm gonna perma block here because I'm low and then hit him with a CC. He blocked that. Try again. Revigor. I have a pop for the heal if I need it. He's heavy rest doing. I should have purified that one. He pressuring. I don't need the pot heal yet. I don't need the pot heal. Probably use a pot heal now. I'm trying to debuff him while he's doing damage and then hit him with a CC. He blocked my CC, so I'm gonna try again after vigoring. There's my CC. That's gonna do it. It's a hard fight. It's a hard fight. If I didn't block the CCs in the critical moments, I could have definitely died.